Hey friends, what's going on? I'd love to be here with you today. I'm a little bit disappointed. I just made this whole video, put all the clips together, and found out it has no sound. But what happened was when I filmed the video, all the clips turned out um, portrait, even though I had the camera in landscape, the angle made them all come out portrait. And I can't stand to watch videos that are in portrait, so I was not going to put this video out in portrait. So I'm going to do a voiceover. So my voice does not match what's going on on the screen. My coughs won't be at the same time. <laughs> my drinks won't be at the same time. But please try to look past all that and just focus on this voiceover. So this month for June, I am working on some larger projects, and so I wanted to share that with you today. But um, leading up to that, I wanted to give you a little bit of backstory and just tell you about our crazy day, long day today, and what's been going on. So um, as I had mentioned in a previous video, Big Daddy has been having like a lot of back pain. He was calling it his sciatic nerve and just... He's been miserable in pain at work on either Thursday or Friday. He did get a Toradol shot and a cortisone shot. He that he does those kind of things at work. <laughs> and so that gave him some relief for Friday evening and Saturday. And then Sunday, he was in so much pain. He was just like hollering like in, his, in the bed. Every time he'd roll over and stuff, he was just miserable pain and so um i think at monday he got a nor another toradol shot at work and that gave him some relief but then tuesday he was hurting so bad and then this morning um he decided to go to the er now what happened with me was I ran out of prednisone either on Saturday or Sunday I can't remember but I called and got a new prescription I got a refill on my prescription but I guess the um, pharmacy and CVS Target was not open on Memorial Day so the soonest they could have it ready was today no yesterday Tuesday so um, I did get that prescription and so yesterday and I took a large dose of prednisone and if you're familiar with prednisone you know that prednisone um, and sleep are not friends it keeps you awake so I knew that when I took that dose so I went ahead and went and took a nap when I took the dose so that I'd be okay if I stayed up all night and couldn't sleep so that's what happened um, I could not sleep last night, so I just stayed up and worked on this new blanket project that I'm working on that I will show you in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, um, so this morning, Big Daddy says um, he got up. I mean, he was hollering before he ever got out of the bed, just trying to get up. He was in pain, and he was just like, you know, just a ho hollering as he was trying to get up and everything. And my heart just goes out to him. I hate to see him in pain like that. I'd rather have the pain than see him in pain. Well, he went on and got his shower, and I finally dozed off right about then, about 6.30. And then, um, I guess he came back in there and said, hey, um, I'm going to go to the ER. Come on, get up and go to the ER with me. And... I guess I thought I was dreaming because he would never say that. <laughs> he would never say he wanted to go to the doctor or the ER unless he thought he was dying or he just cannot take the pain. And that's what's going on. Um, so I fell back asleep because I just, I don't know, I was real sleepy <laughs> at that time. He went on and got dressed, and then he come back. He said, are you going to go with me? And I was like, what? Where? You know, and then I realized, oh, that he did. I, I didn't dream that. <laughs> and so I got up and got dressed real quick and went to the ER with him. And they gave him a um, Toradol shot and a, um inflammation shot. And also they did x-rays. And so come to find out. 
it is um, degenerative disc disease and so I think he has two discs that is um, in bad shape so they talked to him about that and um, they're going to set him up to see a family doctor which he needs to do and I've been telling him that forever that because um, he does not have a doctor that he sees he sees the doctors at work and it's not anything like official he just tells them what's going on with him and they just write him a prescription for whatever you know and stuff like that um it's not like they're really his doctor they're his friends <laughs> so anyway the the um doctor today asked did he have a doctor and he said no not really and then she says she's going to set him up in the clinic to see a family doctor or a general practitioner or somebody, which I am thrilled about because I've been tr trying to get him to go out there to the doctor. And also, they have a diabetic clinic out there, and so he is diabetic, and so the family doctor can refer him to the diabetic clinic, and they can start monitoring, you know, his blood and his um, shots and the amount and all that kind of stuff no one is really following that except him and he just tells the doctors at work that he needs refills and they just refill his medication but they're not really doing blood work and checking all that out and stuff so I'm thrilled that he's gonna go to the clinic and see a doctor so anyway we um, had a very long day you know, I had about 30 minutes of sleep. I got up and went with him to the ER, and we were out there for a good while. And then we um, took his prescriptions and dropped them off at Target. And um, we went and picked up, I went in a store and let him sit in the truck. And I went in and picked up a few things that we needed that I had just realized we were out of. And so, grabbed those, and then because I haven't been able to go anywhere, go to the store and stuff like that, because um, he's been working long hours, and i just kind of been stuck at home. <laughs> and so, um, we, anyway, we did all that, and then I called our son, Elijah. I sent him a text, actually, and asked him if he would go to Target when he got off work to pick up Big Daddy's prescriptions, and he said no problem, of course, and so he did that. So, after we got back home, I got Big Daddy all comfortable in his chair, got him some his snacks, um, a heating pad, his blankie, his pillow, the remote, made sure he had everything he needed, got him all comfortable, and then I went and took a long nap. So, if I look like I just woke up from a nap, it's because I did. And it is what it is. <laughs> so... <clears throat> anyway, we, um, I woke up from the nap and, um, you know, wanted to get on here and do this video, and I'm trying to remember all the things I said before, I'm so upset that that video, the volume didn't turn out or whatever, you know, but, um, hopefully Big Daddy is going to get relief, he's already taken the pain medicine, Elijah came home and brought that, and he's taken that, and so he's gotten some a little relief, and um, he just went in the kitchen and fixed himself something to eat. He heated up leftovers. It's not like he cooked, but he heated up some leftovers, and so he's back there eating that now. So anyway, long, long day. <laughs> long day. So I am... Like I said, I'm going to be working on some longer, larger projects this month. Last month, I worked on lots of little amigurumis, some large amigurumis. <laughs> but, um, you know, I did lots of little projects, and I put out a lot of projects. And that really was not my goal. My goal is never to, like, put out a lot of projects. My goal is just to enjoy crocheting. But um, this month, I kind of want to focus on some larger projects, and 
I was scrolling looking for a stitch sampler blanket and I came across an in interesting site that I've never seen before, never even heard of before. And they had this blanket on there. It's a crochet along actually. And so I thought, well, that looks interesting and it looked challenging. And sometimes, sometimes I like easy projects and then sometimes I like challenging projects. I don't want challenging all the time and I don't want easy all the time, but this looked just challenging enough that it intrigued me and I loved the concept of it and the looks and the colors and everything. And so I decided to um, jump on this. And so last night while I was up and could not sleep the whole night, um, like I got in the bed at five o'clock this morning. I got my shower about four and then I crocheted a little bit longer and then I got in the bed at five. I watched my tablet and then Big Daddy's alarm went off at 530 and then he probably got up about six and then I fell asleep after that and then I only got about 30 minutes of sleep. <laughs> but um, I worked on this square this is center of the blanket I worked on it all night and um, just really enjoyed working on it it was um, you know nice to do something different and to challenge myself sometimes I like to do things just to prove that I can um, I'm like that with everything that I do I like to sometimes just prove I can do something <laughs> anyway um, I don't know what all I said in this video and I hate it <laughs> but I know I need to talk for a little bit longer just to get to the end of this um, I did not purchase yarn for this project I decided to use yarn that I already have so I went to my stash and I have a couple of different stash areas where I keep different types of not types of yarn but because all my yarn is just acrylic so I only have one type of yarn but where I keep yarn in different stages such as my floppies that's you know mostly used skein such and then new skeins and then scrap balls you know just things like that I have it stored kind of different like that anyway so I did not want to purchase yarn I wanted to use my stash use what I had because I um, want to use up all my little floppies and um, you know use what I have so let's see what else can I tell you that I might have said earlier? <laughs> I hate that. I hope y'all forgive me for that. Uh, um, I, I took a large dose of prednisone yesterday. I took another large dose of prednisone today. And then when I tried to nap earlier, I was just, I kept waking up because the prednisone was like, no, get up, get up. And so... <laughs> I can um, I can tell a difference that um, you know the prednisone is helping me. So I did I took a large dose yesterday and I took a um, slightly lower dose today and tomorrow I'll take a slightly lower dose and then I'll be back on my regular amount and I'll continue on that. So hopefully my lungs are going to get stronger and better and I can get over this crazy asthma attack that I've had. Um, usually when I have um, an asthma attack and then I added this dust issue on top of it because I decided to clean the windows and wash curtains um, and it just irritated me even more so it, it usually takes me a little while to get over that but I'm hoping these pregnant zones will give me the push that I need but I definitely can tell that I feel better today after you know having even after no sleep I feel better knowing I mean I feel better since I've had all this prednisone in me anyway <laughs> it is what it is 
But I'm really excited about this crochet along blanket that I'm doing. And I'm just fixing to show you my center square. Uh, like I said, I worked on this all night. I have one more row to go on it. And I am fixing to show you that right now. Okay, so this is the blanket. It's called a, um, this blanket is a crochet along, and it is called Postcards with Love. So it is, um, the center, this large centerpiece, and then it will have smaller squares and rectangles around it, and it just looks really cool, and it's Postcards with Love, and it's like a ocean, beachy, type theme to the blanket and I love the ocean I love water I love the river I love a mud puddle I'm serious I just love being near water water is so relaxing to me um and if Big Daddy's truck was more dependable he and I would take a weekend trip to the beach just to chill anyway um this project here is the center of the blanket and I love how it turned out I just love the colors even though I just pulled from my stash and didn't really you know like go with the colors that they exactly pulled but I will talk to you more about those colors in a minute and show you what colors I chose I'm just gonna take you to the website and just talk to you about this website and show you what the blanket will look like and some of my thoughts on the blanket and such and um, yeah so here we go this blanket crochet along is by King Cole and I do not know anything about King Cole whatsoever but it's called the crochet along postcards with love the blanket is in um, UK terms but they do have this blanket also in US terms and so I really appreciate that I just stumbled across this website I know nothing about this company website people or anything like that but the uh, blanket really did intrigue me and so I decided I was gonna make it and I will leave links below so that you can go and look at this website yourself this is a free pattern it's online so as i'm showing this and you see the pattern i'm not showing anything that was paid for or anything like that it's you can pull it up on your computer and also see it and um that's a little bit of what the pattern the blanket looks like it's not a very good picture there's a better picture later on but in this video i'm not trying to like talk anyone into making this blanket I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing this month I don't care if nobody else makes this blanket that's not my goal whatsoever I'm just sharing what I'm making but if anyone out there decides to make the blanket I would like to know and see your progress also there's a picture of the blanket and you can see um, it, it looks really nice. Um, I love the colors. I love the way it's um, the, squ the squares and the rectangle go around the bigger square. I just think that's really cool. And um, it was, you know, looked intriguing to me. And I love the concept that it's around ocean, water, or whatever, you know. I have no idea where in the world this is photoed at. Um, I guess in the UK. <laughs> so here is the colors that they have, and they chose DK. I do not have DK yarn. I do not work with DK yarn. I only have acrylic weight, um, four weight yarn, and so that's what I've chose. And also, they had um, used a four hook and maybe a four point five hook something like that I usually pick a J hook which is a size 6 hook to do blankets but since this was squares it's gonna be put together and 
I don't know. I just decided to go with a 5.5. It's not that much of a difference, so it'll still be a nice size blanket and drapey enough. And so here you can see they have the pattern that you can open um, the PDF, and they have it in UK and US terms. So that was nice. And their older patterns do not have US terms. They only have the UK terms. And so that must be a new thing that they are doing. And I did, I did appreciate that they did that. I don't know why we all don't use the same terms um, that would, you know, whether it's the UK ones or the US ones, it would just make life easier for everyone if we all use the same terms. <laughs> I just find that very interesting. So anyway, um, the pattern is very easy to read. But as you scroll down here, you will see that there are some videos, and the videos are in UK terms only, so that's a little confusing. I did have to click on that first one and watch a little bit of it. There was a section, um, one of the rows that were doing these back post things. I wasn't quite sure exactly where to reach down to. It was hard to tell from the picture, so I clicked on there and watched that part, and yes, she was talking in the UK terms, and I'm trying to do the US terms, and so that was a little confusing and just like, you know, trying to keep my brain straight on what I was doing and not switch to what she was saying. That was kind of hard, but I was able to see where she put the stitch, so that was very helpful. And the rest of these, like I said, are in UK terms, so I did not watch them. Um, I don't think they would be helpful to me. I think they would be more confusing since I'm doing different, you know, stitches than what she's actually saying. So, and then there's um, a nice photo there. Like I said, I don't know where that is filmed, but I wish I was there. <laughs> I would love to sit in a chair, have my drink next to me, and just crochet away and enjoy the waves and the water there. Okay, so that is the original website where I got the pattern. Now we're going to go and look at the pattern itself. Postcards with Love, Crochet Along Blanket. And that is a great picture there. I love those colors. I love how bright and vibrant it is and just... I love everything about this blanket. Now you'll see that there are some rectangles there that have some words. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that part. I've never done words like that in a blanket. I've never done um, where I'm crocheting and changed to another color to create a picture either. I don't know that I can do that. I'll have to see if um, how she explains it. And hopefully, you know, there might be a video I could watch to see how to do that. Because I'm thinking it would be a hot mess on the other side. I don't know how to do it and not and hide my yarns and stuff like that to carry over and all that. I'm thinking the other side of my blanket would be a hot mess and that I wouldn't be happy with it. So if I figure out that I cannot do the rectangles that have the words... Then I'm going to just do something like these other rectangles and change the colors and um, kind of make it my own. You know, I might put a lighthouse or something in there. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> but I think the blanket is very cool looking. And I can't wait to get more done on it. Okay, so I had to go drink a tea. So anyway, um, you can see this blanket's made up of a large square, some smaller, looks like granny squares, and then there's some rectangles. So I like the um, different size of the squares, putting them together like that. And I think they'll, um, I haven't looked at the join, but I think it's pretty much whip stitched. Now here's the colors they suggested, and I kind of went, close to those colors I will show you in a minute um, and tell you the colors I picked to go with it 
like I said, I didn't want to buy any. But the pattern does give these abbreviations, and then for some of the lesser known stitches, it gives um, a little description. But it's also, you know, like doing double trebles and, um, you know, some things like that. So I did have to read that double treble and figure out how to do that. It's not hard at all. Here's the pattern itself for the, um, what's it called, um, sun, mm, mm -mm. I couldn't read that, <laughs> I was trying to read it on the phone, it is called, uh, sunshine and flower wheel but the pattern is very easy i am on row 18 and that is the last row of the pattern so i've got to go back with my white and do that border around it it's just a row of half double crochets i did stop i started it and then i decided to stop because doing the half double crochets after doing double crochets, I get mixed up and start doing double crochets and in between. So I just needed to take a break. <laughs> so here is the second part of the blanket. It'll be a rectangle and I have to make two of those. I did read over the pattern already and it seems um, simple and easy. So I feel like I'll be able to do that one no problem. And um, I think that's cute, a little beach hut there. Um, I could do a lighthouse on one if I wanted to change it up a little bit. Who knows what I'll do. You know how I am. I like to do things my way. But I love the colors and I think it's just really cool looking. And then, um, <coughs> there, there we go. That's the piece I just finished. Now, I did look on her website and there was another blanket that I really thought was cool and this is it right here called the um, Tropical Shores but they only have it in the UK terms there's not any US terms for it I could translate that myself but I'm lazy but I really do love the look of this blanket I like how they used the circles and made them into squares and then have the squares and I just I like the colors in the blanket that I think they go well together and I just like the overall look of the blanket I love anything that has to do with water and it just mentions tropical shores and it caught my eye <laughs> I think it looks challenging and I would enjoy something like that I think yeah they have all the patterns there listed but they are UK terms which is confusing for me when I'm trying to do US terms and you know especially in the videos where they're talking <clears throat> about the UK terms and I'm trying to crochet US terms I just kind of get a little you know confused I, I, I quit thinking about what I'm doing and I start listening to the person talking so anyway maybe one day I'll go back and make that blanket I think it's really cool and I would like that so I'm going to go back to my desk now and show you the colors that I chose for this blanket, the postcards with love, and my stash. So here's my square and like I said I have one more row and it will be using that white and it's half double crochets all the way around it. Then I will be finished with that and I can weave in my ends. So, I'm just going to lay that up here on me while I show you the colors that I chose and we talk about that for a little bit. <laughs> um, I have this basket. I have a cabinet that has boxes in it of um, floppies is what I call them. It's skeins where I've used a good bit of the skein, but... I'm too lazy to ball it up into a ball so I just throw it in this box and I have it sorted by colors and that works for me <laughs> and then I have my full skein somewhere else and so I wanted to use the floppies before pulling a full skein and so if I didn't have a color I would pull the full skein 
So this blanket calls for a lot of different colors and I chose this color butter for the sun. And I think that's a Craft Smart butter. I'm pretty sure that it is. It's not a bright, bright yellow, but it's bright enough that um, it's not the Red Heart bright yellow is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, um, here's my box of floppies. I have a box like that for every color, but all the basic colors, you know. And I try to use those up in projects before I go to my area where I have full skeins. And if I'm using a color, say I'm using like a turquoise or whatever, and I run out of that color and have to change to a different shade of turquoise or blue, that is going to be perfectly fine for me. I'm not going to be a stickler about the colors. If I was to run out of that butter, which I do not believe I will, I could just change to another yellow that's not called butter, and I'll be fine with that. The, the purpose of this project is just to have fun, um, you know, show that I can do this. This is a aqua color or turquoise color that I chose. Their, their colors, the first color was yellow, the second color is turquoise, and that's what I chose. And I believe that's, I love this yarn, and a turquoise color. Not sure of the correct name because it's a floppy and it doesn't have a label. But I used that on my um, the second part around the sun there. And I love that color. And I have other of that same color. I have other floppies of it. And I also have other floppies of colors that might be a shade, or shade off from that. But they still would completely go and not, you know, mess up the project. So the next color is sage green and I did pick a sage green out of my floppies no 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 I picked a sage green out of my full skeins because Big Daddy I, I know it was sage because Big Daddy had mentioned you know, sage when he picked it up when we were in Michaels and so I used that and then I just did not like how it looked right there the, it just didn't flow well with me and so I ripped that out I didn't go I didn't do very far I just did a little section and I was like oh, I don't like how this is looking so I ripped that out and I went back to my floppies to see if I had a different color and I didn't so I went to my skeins and ended up picking um, this mainstay yarn here that's called teal the funny thing about teal is you could have uh, Mainstay, Red Heart Super Saver, I Love This Yarn, and Craft Smart. And they're all called teal, and they're all different shades and different colors. <laughs> so I think that's very funny. But anyway, I picked that color to use as my sage, even though it doesn't look sage. I just liked that color better for um this project that just kind of reminds me of the ocean um and colors that you know i like and i didn't i didn't care for that sage in it at all so anyway that's my sage when it says sage that's the color i'm going to use and i think it went well with that um it looks fine. It's just enough difference to show that it is different. And it's not a stark difference or anything. So the next color they call for is Jade Green. And so I have this huge ball of this green. I do not know the technical name for it. I do know that I got that big ball at Big Lots. And... Um, I just grabbed it because it did look like jade green although that other color that I just used it might be more suited for jade green but um, there's enough difference but there's not a lot of difference between the two but I'll, I think I'll be happy with that I like the look of that and that's what matters since I'm the one making it <laughs> right make it your own project So, I don't know what I'm saying here, but <laughs> I 
I think I'm talking about they call for a cream color next and I went to my tans and off whites and I just I didn't have enough cream that was going to last throughout the blanket and I really did not want to go buy cream or off white like that that they used although it probably would look more like sand I guess maybe was the concept but all the squares call for the cream and the, each squares are put together with cream and just cream is all in the blanket and so I knew I needed a large amount of whatever I used so I decided not to go with a cream and I chose to go with um, soft white red heart and so that is what I'm using instead of cream that is off white it looks white unless you put it next to white and then you can see that oh that's not white <laughs> so if I run out of that which I don't think I will because it's like 700 and something yards but if I did run out of it my Walmart always has uh, the soft white because they never have white they only carry the soft white and I can always go to Walmart and get another skein of that to go. And like I said, I need to use that off-white, that soft-white, I mean, to go around the last row. So the next color they call for is red. So I went to my floppies, and I did have a skein that had been used and didn't have a ball band. I'm pretty sure it's a Red Heart Super Saver. Um, red, maybe bright red, cherry red, or something like that. And so that's what I chose for my red. And that red was a thicker four than other yarns. Um, it was almost like crocheting with rope after using that mainstay that's a much softer yarn. So I made those flowers there on the square with that rope. <laughs> So I think the red looks good. It's um, bright and pretty, and it you know made those flowers there. I don't know if it's supposed to look like tulips or what, but it does look like flowers. I really like how this is turning out. Um, the next color they call for is French navy. I have no idea what French navy looks like, but I know what navy is. So, I just looked in my box of floppies and was trying to find something, you know, navy. And I found this one that had a lot of yarn on it. I don't know what kind that is. Um, I don't know what brand. I just know that it's navy. I don't think it's French. <laughs> I've never seen the colorway French navy. Maybe the yarns that they used had unique names and they just named one French Navy I don't know where the French comes from but anyway um, I'm using that Navy and so I think that um, looks good around that and then the next color they call for is a pink and I had picked this pastel pink originally but then as I got to it I was like oh that pastel is not gonna go I didn't like the looks of it. I just kind of laid it up there and decided uh, that was not the pink for me. And so I was trying to decide what pink to use. And actually the pink was laid out that I had used this past weekend when I was making those birthday um, pillar cuddler thingies. So I still had that pink laying on my desk because, you know, I'm horrible at putting yarn away. And it is a vibrant bright pink it's mainstay and the color of it is pink and so um it's much brighter color and just vibrant and i laid it up there and i just thought that was the pop that it needed to go after that navy and so i decided to just go with that and i love how it turned out so that is the pink i'm using I do have another skein of that pink if I was to run out, but I probably won't. I looked at the pattern, uh, at the blanket, you know, to see how much pink is used on it, and it's really not, it's not a whole lot of pink, but, you know, it's some every now and then. So that one skein might be enough, but if not, I do have a full skein of that pink in my stash. 
And the next color that they call for is an orange. And the same thing, I had an orange pulled out, but then I decided it was a too dark of an orange. Um, I don't know what the colorway was yet, but I, I saw that I had this pumpkin in my full skein stash, and it's a brighter orange, and I thought it would go better with that bright pink. So I hope that my blanket does turn out bright and cheerful. Um, so far, I'm just loving that. I love the way that navy pink and orange look together on there after the white. And I don't think the camera is really showing the true um, colors of that and just how pretty and bright and vibrant that looks. But um, take my word, it does. It looks really good. So, yeah, um, um, almost finished with that square. I just got that one more round to go of half double crochets of my soft white and then I will be able to um, call that square finished and move on to the next one. I still got to weave in ends on this one so I will do that when I finish the off white so that that square is completely finished and ready to be sewn together once that time comes. So anyway, I hope this month that you will come back and check my videos and follow along and watch my um, squares develop and my blanket grow. Um, I think it's going to be a fun project. Uh, I think that I'll enjoy the challenge. And like I said, I'm not trying to talk anyone into making the blanket for themselves, you know, or whatever. I'm not trying to talk anyone into doing a crochet along. This is just something I'm doing for myself and that I'm sharing with you guys. But if you do want to join in and let me know you're working on it, that's perfectly fine too. Yes, um, I think actually after I recorded those and I was trying to put this together and I was waiting on videos to flip and stuff like that. I went ahead and put that um, off that soft white um, around it, and it looks really good. So I am finished with that square. Other than while this is uploading, I'm going to flip it over and weave in all my little ends. Bye, friends.